Now, I'm often asked, how can I add an inner mouth to a creature that I've created using Dynamesh? So this alien, if we go into frame mode and step down our subdivision levels, you see that he has been retopologized. There are loops around the eyes and the mouth, but there is no inner mouth. The lips are just sort of joined together. So I'd like to demonstrate what I do if I need to add an internal mouth to an object like this or to a character like this. I will mask out the lower jaw, invert that mask, make sure that we've got X symmetry turned on when we do this. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that and just redo that mask. There we go. And I want to get the mask sort of feathered along the backside of the jaw and feathered here along the underside of the cheekbone. We're going to open the mouth. I'm going to erase the mask here. Just want to get it right up to the bottom of the lip there. Now I can mask it like this manually. Another thing that I can do also that I just want to point out is if you go to B for brush, S for select, and select the selection lasso brush, you can also use this brush to manually hide the faces that you don't intend on manipulating. So what I'll do is I'll try and get a good edge like this. Let's invert that visibility. And then I'm just going to go in here and manually hide the faces that I don't intend to work with. Now I don't have to have good edge loops in the areas that I'm trying to sort of show and high hide. That's not really necessary. I just want to get a decent kind of isolation here. So let's invert that and see what we've got. That's reasonable. So what I will do is I will go to my polygroups, group visible, so I can easily isolate that lower jaw. Ultimately, it's the same. I just want to end up go to B for brush, S for select. Let's go back to select, select rectangle. I just want to isolate this and then be able to mask the lower jaw. Control click on the background to invert the mask. Then I will go to transpose rotate, turn off the gizmo, and I'm going to draw a transpose line from the pivot point of the jaw out. And I'm just going to rotate that jaw open. Now we are going to get some compression, some problem areas down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to morph target, store morph target. That stores a copy of the mesh in memory. So I've got a copy of the unaltered neck stored in memory. I'm going to open the mouth like this. Now I'm just going to go to control shift click on the jaw here. B for brush, M for morph, select the morph brush, which is the O hotkey. I can mask this part of the jaw, which I definitely don't want to change. I want this jaw to stay open. So I want all these faces to be unchanged. But if I use my morph brush, let's rotate this around so you can see it better, I can start to blend this back to its original position. Let's show everything again by control shift clicking on the background, and then we can just blend this back. There we go. So you see what's happening is we're blending the neck and getting that little compression there. Clear our mask, go to geometry, and then step up our subdivision levels. Now we've got the mouth open, but we don't have uh, a mouth bag. We don't have an internal mouth. So I'm going to zoom in here. Let's turn off frame mode, shift F, and come down here. Now, of course, I had RGB turned on on my brush, so that's getting rid of the poly paint. So I'll just go to RGB, color fill object because we don't need poly paint for this particular demonstration. I'll go to the clay tubes brush, turn off the alpha, turn my focal shift to about two, and I just want to fill in this area here a little bit. There we go. Now I need to dynamesh the mesh again. I'm going to go to subtool. I'm going to duplicate the head so I've got the high-res version intact. And I'm going to go to geometry, delete my lower subdivision levels, I'm going to go to Dynamesh, and I am going to set my resolution, set this to about, well, let's try it about 504, and then Dynamesh. The idea is we want to Dynamesh it and maintain all those details that we had in our original, and that's pretty good. We've maintained those details. Now I'm going to go to B for Brush, I for Insert, 
and I'm going to go to IMM primitives. We'll grab a s insert sphere, click and drag, and I want to make sure that this is drawing centered on the model. So let's go to about here, click and drag. So I've just drawn a sphere as an insert mesh. We'll leave the rest of the model masked, and I'm going to take the move brush, and I'm just going to use the move brush to start to shape what would be a mouth bag. I can hide the rest of the model by control shift clicking on it, and I'm just doing the shape of the internals of the mouth, essentially. So just imagine that you're sculpting the negative spaces of the inside of the mouth, including the backs of the lips. Okay, control shift click on the background to show everything again, and then I'll just take transpose move, and I'm just going to move this, and then rotate this so it's positioned inside the mouth. I'm going to take W for move, and I'm just going to squash it in this direction like so. Take my move brush and still realize that we have everything masked but the mouth bag that we're working on. So we're just going to take this, bring this up here. Make sure that we're going to basically fill out all this area. There we go. Bring this. We don't want to erode away the lips that we sculpted. So we're anywhere that's not lip, everywhere where it's sort of stretching, we're going to get that. Okay. Now I'm going to control shift click on this. Just make sure it's sitting inside the head. Control shift click on the mouth bag that we just sculpted. And I'm going to go to polygroups. And I'm going to click group. Um, group as DynaMesh sub. So that adds a white polygroup to that object, which means it's a DynaMesh subtraction object. So watch what happens now when I execute DynaMesh. Control, click and drag once to clear the mask. Control, click and drag a second time. And this will execute a DynaMesh subtraction. So basically it will subtract out that mouth interior. There we go. Everything that I just sculpted is now negative space. So it will require some cleanup. I'll come here in the mouth area, and we're going to have to fix up the um, the lips. Sometimes this can be a bit easier to handle if we isolate it with the visibility marquee. So let's do that. And I'll turn on solo so we don't have the eyes in the way. And I'm just going to take my smooth brush, make sure my Z intensity is all the way up, and let's just do a bit of smoothing here. Just fix that quite harsh edge that we've got there. We will have to do some re-sculpting in the lip area, but it's a small price to pay to get the actual mouth bag in there when we find that we need that. I'm going to take the Trim Dynamic brush. It's one of my favorite sort of default brushes that I have a hotkey set for, and I'm going to knock back this plane here, and I'm going to take the Inflate brush and just inflate these lips a bit. So we've got some volume on the lips on the back end. And let's add some volume to the lips here. Take the move brush, sort of pull this down. Do a little bit of inflate there. And I'll use the standard brush just to knock back sort of the, the bottom of the mouth here. I'll take the clay tubes brush with no alpha and just sort of build up the volumes in the lips here. Zoom out a little bit. Control shift click on the background so we're revealing all again. And let's go ahead and execute DynaMesh. And there we go. So now. I've got enough of that shape where I could go ahead and retopologize this again now and then recapture all of my details and do the rest of my sculpting on the um, on the mesh as it as it is retopologized. So if we go into frame mode, you see everything is the same polygroup. Let me zoom in here. If I control shift click on the inner mouth, 
that's not going to do anything. So everything is one polygroup at this stage. So I'm going to turn off frame mode. Now I will turn off Dynamesh, go to my subtools. Now here I have the mouth open version that does not have the negative space. Here I've got the mouth open version with the negative space. I will duplicate this one, the one that has negative space, and I'm going to retopologize this. So we'll go to geometry, Z remesher, and we'll set our target polygon count to be, let's say, 20,000 faces, adaptive 50 and 50. So let's go ahead and make sure our X symmetry is turned on. I just want to make sure that my center line is looking good. And Z remesh. And here we have our retopologized mesh. It's a bit dense, so we could reduce this further. Um, I might turn on half size. We're at 40,000 faces, so we'll go to half size and Z remesh it now. And that brings us to 24, which that's reasonable. I'm going to go ahead now and re-project this onto my high res. So let's go into my subtools here. Now I can recapture all of my polypaint data if I reproject onto a painted version of the mesh here, uh, as long as I have something that still has polypaint on there, which I don't since we cleared the polypaint. So I will go back to my meshes here. We'll grab the one that actually has negative space. We're going to project onto this to recapture our fine details. So turn off visibility on the initial head, or you could even potentially delete it entirely. Select the remesh. Make sure visibility is turned on on the subtool. I have solo turned on so we can't see it. I'll divide once, and I will go to subtool, project. We can turn off color, project all. I'll divide again and project all. And let's zoom in and see how we're doing with our detail. We'll divide one more time and project all. We just want to make sure that our level of detail is comparable to the original head. And there we go. Now we've captured our detail into this new model with a mouth bag. So I will go back down my subdivision levels. I'm going to turn down the visible count here so we've got more real estate. I'm going to go to my original mesh here, and we're going to delete these, but I want to save this tool first so you have it available in the downloads for this particular lesson. So we'll delete this subtool. We don't need that one. And we will delete this one. You see that it is identical to our other with a couple little places that we can fix. We'll delete that one. Click OK, and now we have our open mouth version of the alien with multiple subdivision levels. So I would zoom in, and anywhere where we're getting a little spike or something as a result of the projection, I would just use the smooth brush to, to smooth those areas out. And now I want to close the mouth again. You know, we want to, to re-sculpt the corners of the mouth, so we can now, because we have our subdivision levels, we can step down and just use the move brush to adjust the corners of the mouth. If I want to try and isolate the inner mouth with a polygroup, it is possible now to use the transpose masking. So if I go to W for transpose, make sure the gizmo is turned off. If I hold down the control key, I can mask based on topology like this, and that will mask based on the underlying topology. As you can see, we get this. So I could control shift click to sharpen the mask. And then I could go to visibility, hide point, and that hides the un unmasked faces. Invert my visibility. Now this is going to appear like flipped normals because it's we're looking at the inside of the mouth. It might be helpful to you to go to display properties and turn on double sided. And we'll go to visibility and we will grow. So we just wanna grow that visibility out to the lips. So I'm going to invert visibility now, and you see that we've got the front of the lips now. So now what I'm going to do is I want to sort of isolate this. So I will go to B for brush, S for select, and do the um, select lasso brush. With select lasso brush, if I control shift, click on an edge, I can hide an edge loop. And as long as that edge loop goes all the way around, I can isolate a part like this. So that's Okay, let's get this one here. There we go. So I'll go to polygroup, auto group. 
So now I have automatically polygrouped these areas. So I will go back to B for brush, S for select, R for rectangle. And I will hide this polygroup and the head polygroup, invert my visibility. And let's see, I want to actually get rid of these faces here. I want those to be part of the inner mouth and those as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and go to polygroups, group visible. So I've grouped the head and those sort of stray portions of the mouth. I'll use a visibility marquee to isolate these spaces here. And I'll go back to my selection lasso. Use control shift click to hide these faces here just by hiding these rings of edges. Oops, we don't want that one. Make sure that we get this one. And I want to get this one and this one. And we just rotate around and make sure that we've got what we want. Very good. So I will group visible. Invert my visibility now. I am going to go back to B for brush, S for select, R for rectangle. And then I will control shift click on the head that hides that. Oops. There we go. That head is unfortunately maintaining the polygroup with the uh, those faces right there. So the easiest way to deal with this now is to just do auto group. And that gives the inner mouth and this portion of the head two different polygroups. So now if I control shift click on the background, now I've got that extra polygroup and it's easy enough to hide the head, hide that portion of the face, invert visibility and group visible. Now I've organized the inner mouth into its own polygroup and the head and the outer portion of the head into its own polygroup. So to close the mouth, we'll do exactly what we did before. We'll just mask out the area that we want to manipulate. Make sure that we have our X symmetry turned on when we do this. Control click to feather the edges of the mask. Control click on the background to invert the mask. Go to transpose rotate and we'll draw a transpose line from the point of rotation out. And then we can just close the mouth. Now it might require a little bit of massaging to get this into place. I might take my transpose line and just use W for move. And maybe we'll just move this back, make sure that that's sticking straight out. So I'm gonna draw a transpose line like this. There we go. And then hold down uh, the shift key and I can shift the jaw back. R for rotate, close the mouth. Clear the mask. And then we'll just need to do some re-sculpting in areas that we're having a problem with, like the chin there. We can re-sculpt that a little bit. Let's just do a little bit of smoothing in the corners of the mouth. I'll take the inflate brush, and we'll just do a little bit of inflating along the lips here to bring the lips together. If I want to mask out the lower lips here, it's actually pretty easy just to go ahead and grab that with a masking marquee and then take the move brush and we can pull that upper lip down, clear the masking, and then step back up our subdivision levels. Now we've got an alien which has a mouth bag and an interior mouth in there and then we can carry on sculpting and correcting the mouth area that was deformed as a result of making that but it's not much trouble to go in here and sort of rework these areas when we realize that we're able to just very quickly drop into a DynaMesh, add something as extensive as an interior mouth bag, and then all we have to do is just a little bit of projection and a little bit of re-sculpting around the mouth area. We'll take the move brush and we can readjust these shapes like so. We can take the damn standard brush, start to add some more wrinkles to the mouth here. And it's not a lot of trouble to come in here and, and really start to, to tighten up and fix anything that we lost as a result of that process. So it's a very, very common question that I get in my classes. How can I add a mouth bag to something that I started as a DynaMesh? Because you may not be thinking about the mouth interior when you're doing a design sculpt, and then that does become an issue later on when you decide that you want to do some animation with it, you want to do some further work. So I'll save this tool so you have access to all the process files as well as the final bit here. And you can use those if you want to follow along in this process and see how everything came together and how to do this yourself. So that's how to add a mouth bag to a DynaMesh sculpt. I hope you've enjoyed this and you can use this in your own workflow. And I'll see you in the next video.